Good evening and welcome to the service. We pray God's blessing upon you as you worship with us. Um, we have just a few things that um, I was texting with Kim Cochran today. Uh, Terry, she wanted to make sure that you all knew how appreciative that Terry is of the cards that, that people have been leaving and um, taking up. She reads them to, every, to him and uh, he is, he is uh, back in the hospital. Hopefully we'll be getting out on Monday, but um, please keep praying for him. And um, please keep dropping off cards because it, it really means a lot to him. We hope that you'll be able to stay following the service today, which will be short sermon. <laughs> Jack gave me the thumbs up. That's good. Um, and we'll have a congregational meeting about the air conditioning. I can't believe it, but Ash Wednesday is Wednesday. Yikes. So, Ash Wednesday, we will be having throughout the, the Lenten and Holy Week time, we will be having a 1215 service as well as an evening service. On Ash Wednesday, we will have a 1215 and a 5.30 service. This allows Spirit Alive to have a seven o'clock service. Um, so 12.15 and 5.30, we will be having communion um, in the pews, but also the imposition of ashes. Any other announcements? Then let us please stand for the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who creates us, redeems us, and calls us by name. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you and your beloved children. We have turned our faces away from your glory when it did not appear as we expected. We have rejected your word when it made us confront ourselves. We have failed to show hospitality to those you called us to welcome. Accept our repentance for the things we have done and the things we have left undone. For the sake of Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us and lead us that we may bathe in the glory of your Son, born among us, and reflect your love for all creation. Amen. Rejoice in this good news. In Christ Jesus, your sins are forgiven. You are descendants of the Most High, adopted into the household of Christ, and inheritors of eternal life. Live as freed and forgiven children of God. Amen. Let us sing our opening hymn, Shine, Jesus, Shine.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Holy God, mighty and immortal, you are beyond our knowing, yet we see your glory in the face of Jesus Christ. Transform us into the likeness of your Son, who renewed our humanity so that we may share in his divinity. Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The first reading is from Exodus, the 34th chapter, beginning with the 29th verse. When Moses came down Mount Sinai, carrying the two stone tablets inscribed with the terms of the covenant, he wasn't aware that his face had become radiant because he had spoken to the Lord. So when Aaron and the people of Israel saw the radiance of Moses' face, they were afraid to come near him. But Moses called out to them and asked Aaron and all the leaders of the community to come over and he talked with them. Then all the people of Israel approached him, and Moses gave them all the instructions the Lord had given him on Mount Sinai. When Moses finished speaking with them, he covered his face with a veil. But whenever he went into the tent of meeting to speak with the Lord, he would remove the veil until he came out again. Then he would give the people whatever instructions the Lord had given him, and the people of Israel would see the radiant glow of his face. So he would put the veil over his face until he returned to speak with the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Please stand for the gospel acclamation. <laughs> Gospel according to St. Luke, the ninth chapter, beginning with the 28th verse. Glory to you, O Lord. About eight days later, Jesus took Peter, John, and James up on a mountain to pray. And as he was praying, the appearance of his face was transformed, and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly, two men, Moses and Elijah, appeared and began talking with Jesus. They were glorious to see and they were speaking about his exodus from this world, which was about to be fulfilled in Jerusalem. Peter and the others had fallen asleep. When they woke up, they saw Jesus' glory and the two men standing with him. As Moses and Elijah were starting to leave, Peter, not even knowing what he was saying, blurted out, Master, it's wonderful for us to be here. Let's make three shelters as memorials, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. But even as he was saying this, a cloud overshadowed them, and terror gripped them as the cloud covered them. Then a voice from the cloud said, This is my son, the chosen one. Listen to him. When the voice finished, Jesus was there alone. They didn't tell anyone at that time what they had seen. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. You may be seated. Let us pray. Prepare our hearts, Lord, to receive your word. Silence in us any voice but your own, so that by hearing we may believe and by believing we may obey your will. Reveal to us through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 
Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Transfiguration. Now that's one of those words that I don't often use in my everyday speaking. It's kind of one of those churchy words. But transfiguration is a lot like being transformed or changed. Well, this is transfiguration of Jesus. He went up with Peter and James and John, some of his closest disciples, and he began to pray on top of the mountain, and suddenly he began to glow. And all of a sudden there's Moses and Elijah, and I have to say, I don't think Peter had a clue what was going on. I don't think I would have had a clue what was going on. I still don't have a clue what it all means. But here's Moses and Elijah, and he's talking with them, and all of a sudden there is a voice from heaven saying, this is my son, listen to him. I think I'd be on the ground. Um, and, but Peter realizes this is something great. This is something so far beyond what he can comprehend, and he just knows it's good to be there. And he wants to build booths. It's interesting, in the Orthodox tradition, I understand that they take it from a different point. It's not so much that Jesus was suddenly changed or transfigured. It's that the disciples were. That the blinders were dropped from their eyes. Jesus was like he always was. Maybe radiating that glory because Jesus being fully God and fully human, radiating that glory. And maybe for the first time, those disciples saw that. It didn't last long, but maybe for the first time they saw Jesus for who he is. Which makes me think then, how do we see Jesus? How are we changed or transformed or even transfigured by Jesus? Does it change the way we think? Does it change the way we act to know that Jesus is fully God, fully human, comes to earth, suffers, and dies for you and for me, and is raised from the dead for you and me, and knows everything about us and still loves us unconditionally? Have the blinders dropped for us can we see Jesus and can we be changed? Pastor uh, Tracy Daly talked about before she became a pastor, she was a pediatric intern and she served with a pediatric uh, on, on surgery for, for pediatrics. And she said, one of the doctors one of the pediatric surgeons was cold. Great surgeon, but you know, the kind that have no bedside manner, is just like he's cold, emotionless. And she said, I always saw him as one who just saw these tiny little babies or these little children as just another puzzle to be solved. Not really thinking of them as this little child. But he was good. And she said, there was one uh, neonatal ultrasound that showed that this baby, who was seven months along, was in distress. It seems that there was a vascular malfunction, and it just got worse and worse. And if they didn't do something, the baby would die. So the surgical team, medical team, decided they would do a C-section and then perform surgery on the baby. And it was risky, but if they didn't do anything, that baby would die, so they wanted to be able to do everything that they could. The C-section went well, and they started surgery. 
And the medical team realized early on it was not going well. And the baby wasn't going to make it. The baby passed away. And the medical team bundled her up in blankets and began to walk down the hall so the parents could be able to hold her. The surgeon, this, this cold, this cold, emotionless surgeon was carrying the baby. And Pastor Daly said that all of a sudden he ducked into an empty OR an emotion for her to come in there. And he just slid down the wall while he was holding the baby and broke down in tears, just unable to stop crying. And Daly said, I looked at him and I thought, is it because it didn't go well? Did you see this baby as a child? You know, wondering, what was it? Did he feel like he was a failure? What was going on with him? But she saw him in a whole different light. Because she said, his empathy and his compassion shone through. The next day, he was back to that very stoic self. But she said, I never saw him again without seeing him have the tears run down his face to know that he empathized, to know that he had compassion. And she said, I realized that not only was he changed, but I was changed. And that made me think, how are we changed by the love of God? How are we able to see others as Jesus sees them? When we hear of those going through suffering, I think of Jesus and Lazarus, knowing that Lazarus had died and knowing that he could raise him from the dead, what did Jesus do but wept? I believe that Jesus grieves with us as we grieve that Jesus suffers us with us as we suffer. And are we changed knowing that our God who loves us so much is with us, not just in the good times, but in the deep valleys. Transfiguration maybe has something more to do with us than Jesus. May our blinders be taken away. May our compassion and our love be shared with one another. May we be so changed this day. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Let us sing the hymn.
please stand as you're able to confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Transform us by your greatness, O God. Send us down the mountain to share joy with all people. Make us agents of change, confident that your hope will vanquish despair and your goodness will conquer evil. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, our prayer. God of peace and justice, we pray for the people of Ukraine today. We pray for the laying down of weapons. We pray for all those who fear for tomorrow, that your spirit of comfort would draw near to them. We pray for those with power over war or peace, for wisdom, discernment, and compassion to guide their, this, their decisions. Above all, we pray for your precious children at risk and in fear that you would hold them and protect them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heal those who are in distress, especially Terry, Susie, Chris, Ted, Karen, Susan, Margaret, Diana, Vernus, Ben, Laura, Howard, Janet, Jerry, and those we name before you either out loud or in the silence of our hearts. Give patience to those waiting for answers. Grant hope to those who have reached the limits of treatment. Give compassionate hearts to those who accompany loved ones through illness and uncertainty. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Today, we shout Alleluia from the mountaintop. This coming week, we enter the, light, the wilderness of Lent. Guide and direct us to take the time to reflect on all that you have given us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things and whatever else you see that we need, grant it for the sake of him who died and rose again. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. You may be seated as we continue with communion. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me, the body of Christ given for you. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. The blood of Christ shed for you. For as often as we eat this bread and drink from this cup, we are reminded that Christ is present, whose glory transcends all understanding who calls us to go out into this world to share love, peace, and compassion. Let us pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now may the God of hope fill us with all peace, joy and peace in believing, so that we may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit, through Christ Jesus, for whom we wait. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. We are going to sing our final hymn, We Are Marching in the Light of God, and we hope that you'll be able to stay for the annual, uh, not annual meeting, for the, for the congregational meeting, and um, we will start it as, as soon as we can. in peace, share the good news.